as we all know, uh, we're in the southern hemisphere here. Um, in winter, the sun is low to the north. And for that reason, we try and design systems with a northern orientation so that over the duration of a, an annual period, the system is going to provide the uh, most performance overall. Uh, but having said that, as we all know, when you're going out and looking at people's houses, um, designing systems, quoting for your customer, they don't always have that perfectly north-facing roof. Uh, so as long as, as the designer or selling the system, you're aware to be able to instruct the customer of those differences in, in output and performance for different orientations, then, uh, then you're certainly covered in terms of um, your liability and um, information provided. Now, anybody here who is an accredited person, as, um, as the vast majority of you would know, that when you provide all the information to a customer, a design summary is required for the customer, which actually shows them performance estimate for that year long duration. So orientation and tilt are factors that are put into all those spreadsheets that we use. And um, any shading issues, of course, have to be addressed and measured and calculated accordingly. When it comes to quoting and installing systems on people's roofs, we don't always have that best aspect, that northern aspect. Uh, for example, you might um, go to a house that looks something like this. Just a basic example. And we'll assume that north is still directly to the top there. Now, ideally, uh, you would want to use this section of roof here to get the most performance for your customer. But um, what we've seen over the last couple of years in all the different states is um, changes in uh, government policies in terms of feed-in tariffs. And now that we're all on very low feed-in tariffs throughout the state, uh, Victoria between six and eight cents, I believe, uh, designing a system to produce the utmost available yield is not necessarily going to provide your customer with the best outcome. Now, that can be because if they can self-consume as much of that solar power as possible, rather than selling surplus back to the grid, then they may potentially be able to save more from a system that actually generates a little less power. I'll explain that a little bit more detail because it sounds like I'm contradicting myself there. So what we might have is um, a particular house here that Mrs Jones lives in. And uh, you go out to quote that and she wants a five kilowatt system and we can comfortably fit five kilowatts worth of panels on the roof here. Um, and facing that orientation is going to give her the best performance. But Mrs Jones tells you when you sit down and have a chat with her that um, she tends to use a lot of power in the afternoons because she likes to start cooking at three o'clock in the afternoon. And, and um, she's very wary about getting hot. She likes to keep comfortable, so she puts her air conditioners on every afternoon as well. So what that might mean in her case is that she's using quite a lot of power through that period of the afternoon time. And so perhaps potentially fitting some modules over on the western side here will help increase her uh, daytime period of production. If we look at, um, if we say 6 a.m. here, to 6 a.m. We'll just graph her energy use patterns, for example, over a 24-hour period. It's p.m. Midday, midnight. So she likes to sleep in. Got a fridge going all night, cutting in and out. And in the afternoon, she likes to cook and use a bit of power, watch a bit of TV at night, and goes to bed around here. So, of course, we've got a standby power, which is always in use, for refrigerators, etc. Uh, but as we can see, essentially, her big power usage is through the day. 
Now, if we were to have a north-facing solar power system on the roof and to graph the performance of that system on, say, a, a nice clear day, the curve may look something like this. Which means Mrs. Jones is going to have this export power over here, of which she's only getting eight cents back to the grid. But all this power under here, where it crosses over, she's utilising and it's saving her 30 cents per kilowatt hour or whatever the rate may be. Now, if by utilising this section of west facing roof here, as well as the north facing, what that might allow Mrs Jones to do is change the profile of her curve. So this section might still be the same. It might not peak as high, but it might run a little bit further into the afternoon like that. So that means she's been able to self-consume all this additional amount of power here, potentially saving her a few extra dollars. So just something to consider when you're designing systems. Um, most string inverters will give you a little bit of flexibility in terms of being able to split the array. And certainly micro inverters, and we'll touch on that later on, give you even more flexibility in terms of the number of modules you can have on different sections of the roof here. And uh, you might even get the case where you can split panels on three different faces, uh, three different orientations to, to make that, that curve even broader. If we were to take an eastern orientation, for example, as well, if it was available, uh, then it, potentially you can bring this curve down over this way too. So just a little bit of um, food for thought there when designing systems.